Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. Hope you're unlike me having some amazing holidays somewhere. But today we'll be taking a look at the legendary one and only McAfee Total Protection. This is of course no ordinary antivirus or anti-malware software. This is the stuff of legend so much so that there is a role called Lord McAfee on TPSC Discord which incidentally you can join using the link in the description, wink wink. But as you can see, it's protected us from 32 risky connections so far. We've been fortunate enough to acquire a trial, so I'm ready to take this out for a roll, see how it does. Of course, when I first tried to install it, I did run into some activation issues. It crashed a couple of times, but hey, life would be boring without it. The user interface hasn't changed a lot, and I'm not sure that's a good thing. I've always found the McAfee layout quite confusing. I mean, real-time scanning here, and then when you click on it, it opens up in a different pop-up window, and the only setting you have is for excluded files. Everything just seems a bit slow and clunky to me. This is an outdated UI, even though it looks good from the design standpoint, aesthetics are fine. Functionality wise, it's not a very good design. But anyway, I'm no designer either. So what I'll do is try and do an update if I can find how to do it. And then we're going to go ahead and do our usual task, which includes running a lot of malware from a network drive and seeing how McAfee responds proactively. So as usual, we have our script to automate all of this. First, we'll switch over to the network drive, which should be Y, let's say, yep. And now we just have to execute malix.py. That's where the magic happens. Oh wait, I've done goofed. Okay, never mind that. Now we're ready to go. As you can see, real-time protection is turned on. I will also show you what files we have. So I'll go over and show you the network drive. As you can see, we've got 1824 items. There's ransomware, there's malware, there's everything in there. I don't even know what's in there. I don't even want to find out. If McAfee blocks it, it's good. If it doesn't, well, as they say in the movies, God help us. The fact that it takes 20 seconds to block the first file isn't particularly promising, but we'll see how this goes. Now, I did see some random file just be created in shared folders, so I'm a little bit concerned. The proactive detection dropped to 85%, so we have a couple of misses. Now, it is proceeding at an extremely slow pace. I'm going to open Task Manager and show you the performance graphs. So for the CPU, it's fairly utilized, but not as much as I'd like to see. McAfee is only at, what, 2.8%? Uh, 7.9, 9.6? Okay, so low to moderate CPU usage, but the test is going really slow. I'll leave this open in the background for you to look at while the test is going on. Okay, so I'm actually going to show you this. So if you take a look at the network drive from where I'm executing this, as you just saw, there's a random malware executable that just uh, popped up and now it's disappeared again. So that is not good. That's happened like three or four times so far. I know this is holiday season and everyone's talking about how the moment lasts forever, but I think McAfee took that interpretation a little too literally with this uh, scan engine. This is very much a McAfee experience. This is exactly how I remember McAfee back in my childhood days. You know, when viruses were actually fun and you'd get a McAfee CD with whatever computer you bought. For those of you who don't know what a CD is, it's um, it's one of those discs that you used to have, which was shiny. It wasn't a kid's toy. I mean, I guess it was, but it also contained data on it. I know it probably sounds like a strange concept, unless you're one of those guys who still uses DVD players or whatever. But hey, that was McAfee's heyday. As you can see, it's still up to the challenge. We've managed to make it to 2%. Come on, McAfee, I believe in you.
Okay, so it's a different time of the day, as you can probably tell. If it took a bit longer, could have been a different year as well, but the test is finally done. We've got all 1824 files executed with a final proactive detection of 95.61%. Not too shabby, but we do have some process in memory. Keep in mind, even though this did take a really, really long time, the CPU usage was fairly low. So I'm guessing McAfee tries to use as little resources as possible when it's dealing with malware, which is not an approach I prefer. From my experience, it usually leads to more system instability when you're actually dealing with an infection, especially if the malware decides to take up more of the CPU. But of course, that's just a side note. The main point we're going to look at is whether or not the system has any active malware on it. In order to figure that out, I will of course restart the system and then we'll run some second opinion scans, do some analysis and see if anything starts up. There might be process in memory right now, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the system is compromised. Now it's entirely possible that the malware that's in memory could have leaked our passwords or done something like that but again malware is typically persistent Welcome back to our wonderful test system here at the PC Security Channel. As promised, I've got the final results. It's actually surprisingly decent, so Malwarebytes did not detect anything. Neither did Hitman Pro, apart from the VM display driver, which is obviously suspicious, but not malware. Norn Power Razor, funnily enough, got us our first real infection. So this is still in the shared folder. I was quite excited thinking I never thought I'd see the day when McAfee got a clean sheet. But of course, it's not exactly a clean sheet because we do have this install.exe application and we've got a dot crypto locker file. Now this suggests that malware was actually successfully executed on the system. It did do stuff but either McAfee removed it reactively or it was able to prevent it from doing any damage to the host computer. So it's really nice actually to see that McAfee managed to do this. But at the same time, you have to consider that if this was an actual network computer, you don't want damage on the shared drives either. So for example, the malware executing on this system with McAfee active could have potentially encrypted our files on a system that this one is network to. At least that's the suggestion I get from this dot crypto locker file. So this kind of susceptibility to ransomware is something that I cannot justify and so I won't be giving it a clean sheet. But honestly it's not as bad as I would have expected giving some of McAfee's legacy. What am I even talking about? McAfee's the best product ever. But hey these are the results. I hope you enjoyed this video. I was expecting more fireworks given that it's close to New Year. I was expecting malware to do crazy stuff, but I guess we'll just have to settle for hfko2quqas.cryptolocker. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video, share if you enjoyed it, and of course, subscribe to the PC Security channel. This is Leo. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.